I'm really fascinated today because we got with us Mark Wahlberg. Mark, how, how are you, welcome you are. Good to be with you. Thank you you got you have got it takes a lot to get me excited about something, <laughs> but this film, Father Stu, I haven't seen it. I gotta be honest with you. Yeah. Mark, it, it's coming out April thirteenth, right? Yes. But I've read a lot about it. Uh -huh. You um now this is interesting. Your parish priest kind of told you what? Eight years or so ago, six years about ago. this Father Stuart yeah. Long. Yeah. You never knew about him. You never met him, huh? No, no. They had known each other. I think they were in the seminary together, and they were friends before Stu went into the seminary. Uh, and you know, I was with Father Orion as well, who is you know just spent all day you know hearing confessions. And so I just wanted to take them to dinner. We do our five o'clock early dinner, and he kept trying to pitch me on this movie. And I'm like, I know we're in Hollywood, but uh, you know, is it a little extreme that you're pitching me a movie? But then when he told me the story again, I realized, wow, this is something that I've actually been looking for because um you know when when i've been so blessed and so fortunate i'm like okay i know this is for a reason and what is the bigger picture and purpose for me and so they'd be able to make this movie and bring this story to so many people because Stu uh was hard at work always and touching people and really inspired lots of folks and i knew this 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 story would be a you know a continuation of that mark was there a script that you reviewed or did you who, there who was kind no of composed script. the script there was no all? there was no script i was working at one point with david o russell uh, who I had made three films with. We got uh, a screenplay that didn't work. I said, I'm going to kind of go off and do this on my own. I was picking Mel Gibson's brain because he had made The Passion of the Christ. That yeah. was a, a wonderful love letter to God. And so I wanted to kind of learn the pros and cons of the process from him. And then uh, Rosalind Ross, who'd written something else, she said she'd be interested in taking a crack at the script. She felt like she could really relate to this guy trying to find his purpose. <clears throat> and so she went off three months later, came back and handed me a script that I wanted to make. Sure, sure. And so I said, if you could put it on the page, you could put it on the screen. So I asked her to direct the movie. She had never directed before. And uh, here we are with a movie that I think has been continued to be blessed throughout the process. We wanted to make the best version of the movie. We did that. We were able to get... You did it in 30 days. Which yeah, we shot the film happened. in 30 days. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but it, it and so even before I had the screenplay, like Father Ed would come to my house and, and you know, we'd do a mass together. So I'd kind of perform the duties of a priest just so I could prepare. And I've been pre preparing to play with this role for quite some time. Yeah. Now, look, you never knew Father Stu. Yeah. Something, I don't want to put you on the spot, Mark, but something tells me you may have seen yourself in him, too. Because you've been through oh, absolutely, absolutely. The story absolutely. Of yep. All renewal. the trouble, all the trouble that I had been in my youth, and uh, you know, thankfully there were amazing people in my life that pointed me in the right direction and pointed me to my faith. And once I started doing that and focusing on my faith, good things started happening in my life. And so, of course, I'm a guy who's all about routine. If something works, I'm not going to change it. And so that's just kind of been the way I start every day. And you know, uh, I really accredit all my success, both personally and professionally, to my faith. Good. Mark, just for our listeners and viewers, just give us kind of the thumbnail sketch of what this Father Stu was all about. He didn't start as a saint. He didn't start one. Oh, to be a no. Priest. It was the complete opposite. This is sort Stu of a, was a very, story. very rough and tumble guy. He was a boxer in Helena, Montana. He lost a younger brother <clears throat> at a very early age, a rare disease. Yeah. yeah. So when. When that happened, the parents didn't really have the coping skills to, to, to deal with that. Stu was left to his own devices. He was angry at the world. He started fighting. He got hurt in a fight. Decided he was going to go to L.A. to become an actor. Was uh, pretty naive about the, uh, the odds of becoming successful in L.A. Went there, had a bad experience, but met this amazing woman while he was working at a supermarket. She was a devout Catholic and was recruiting people to the church. So he followed her into the church, thinking, you know, that uh, he would just do whatever He'd he said, could. He said, I'll wait 40 years for a date with you. <laughs> yes, exactly. And so, and then, uh, and then he's committed to getting baptized, and he gets into this horrible car accident. Uh, well, he was on a motorcycle. He ran into a truck, uh, which was not a good thing. And then he had a visit from Mother Mary. And so not only did he then want to be baptized, but he also wanted to go to the furthest extreme and become a priest. He felt like that was his calling and, uh, you know, went to the seminary, challenged everything about the entire process. They all kind of drove everybody crazy, <laughs> but they knew that there was something special about him and all the real life experience that he had, what he communicated to people who were struggling and going through various things. They really got comfort from him. And so uh, it was remarkable to see how many p people he touched in the short amount of time. Tell me more about this remarkable uh, woman mm -hmm. to whom he became very close. And actually, they, they wanted to get married. And she said, well, you know, first things first, I want, you to, I want to marry somebody who shares my Catholic faith. Mm -hmm. 
And then, but then that, so she sticks with him the whole time, or did she kind of get irritated when uh, she said, hey, I want to be She definitely brief? thinks he's being a little bit extreme, you uh-huh. know, uh, after the accident. What was her when name? He decided, uh, in the film, it's Carmen. Okay. Yeah, her name was Cindy. Uh-huh. Um, but, <clears throat> so. Did you meet her? I didn't get a okay. chance to meet her. I spent lots of time with Stu's family uh-huh. uh, and friends, but I didn't get to meet her. Uh-huh. But yeah, she uh, so she got him into the church, and of course, you know, he was willing to be baptized. He really just wanted a relationship with her. But when he had that visit for Mary, uh, you know, he knew that that uh, you know he had a much bigger calling. Yeah, that yeah, that was that apparition that he that he detected very tangibly in a dream of the Blessed Mother, mm-hmm. and that was sort of the signal to him. I got something in store for you, Mark. You and I were chatting beforehand. You and I both. Uh, See, people are going to think, oh, this, this couldn't happen. But when you look at the Bible, when you look at the men Jesus chose to be his first apostles, they were hardly saints. They were yeah. gritty, rough-and-tumble sinners, right? Yeah. And you kind of see Stu in that. Yeah, of course. I mean, obviously, every sinner has a past, right? And every, and every, every, saint, uh, and every, every sinner saint has had, a future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. So, uh-huh. um, yeah, he, he had so much real-life experience uh, that it was, you know, it, it gave him the credibility when talking to people who are going through difficult times. And then you see other priests uh, in this seminary with him that are very book smart and savvy and really understand the scripture, but they don't have the real life experience to help convey that in the way that Stu did. So during his prison ministry and stuff, you really see uh, how powerful he was in connecting with people yeah. on their level. Get into that a bit, Mark, if you would. We're talking to Mark uh, Wahlberg here on Conversations with Cardinal Dolan on this magnificent new film, Father Stu. Tell me a little bit. See, so the setbacks continued. Mm-hmm. He never had a rosy past. We know about oh, yeah. his past. I mean, he had a problem with drink. He had a problem with fighting. He had health problems. He had You name it, he had it. But even when he converted to Catholicism and into the seminary, it wasn't easy because mm-hmm. a lot of people said, you're not meant to be a priest. This is ridiculous. Yeah. So he struggled. Struggled through the seminary too, right? Yeah, he did. He did. He, uh, you know, but he wasn't. He wasn't deterred by any of that. And even when he was diagnosed with a very rare muscular degenerative disease, um, which would really, you know, make him incapable of performing the duties of a priest, even through that, he accepted it. He knew that he felt. He always felt like he deserved that much more for all the pain and suffering that he caused his parents and everybody else that he encountered in his life. He embraced that, and and it felt like his suffering brought him much closer to God. Yeah. Now, is it? right that when the diocese and by the way i can understand it i'm sometimes at the other side of the desk myself and Mm -hmm. he gets skeptical when the diocese said "Stu, we really appreciate you but we just don't think you're intended to be a priest not only your past not only are you a a brand new catholic but now you got this rare disease that might impede your ability to for priestly ministry his the parish where he was i don't know if he was a member there or was assigned there as a seminarian to help Mm -hmm. they went to bat for him and they lobbied said this guy's gold yeah yeah, and when I talked to Archbishop Thomas, you know, he said to me, he goes, Mark, I got to tell you, Stu did more in his four short years of priesthood than I've done in my 40. And I was like, well, I mean, I can imagine him really touching a lot of people, but when I went to Helena, Montana, and I met all the people from his parish and his family and friends, you could, you, you could tell how much uh, of an impact he had on them. It was really remarkable. Tell me about his four years of priesthood. Was he assigned to prison ministry from the beginning? Uh, he kind of bounced around, and then he was living in assisted living home uh, in Montana. Because of the so people fragile would, yeah, health. people would come and see him, and, yeah, and it was at uh, Carroll College, and... Uh, but yeah, it was remarkable how many people he touched. I guess a good chunk of the film would be his ministry to prisoners. Is that correct? Uh, no, not a good chunk, but you, you, you definitely get to see it. You don't really see him getting um, into the seminary until kind of like the, the third act uh-huh. of the film. Yeah. So about, about half of it would be pre-conversion. Yes. And then afterwards it would be his conversion. Now, yeah. interesting too, Mark, a, a whole other side of this would be his family's reaction. The family was horrified yeah, oh, when absolutely. he became a Catholic. And then yeah. when he said, I want to be a priest, they couldn't believe it. Yeah. And they were antagonistic, weren't they? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then uh, before you know it, Stu had them both baptized. And uh, and now they're, 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 you know, they've been serving. And uh, Bill's mom is no longer with us. But his dad is uh, is amazing. I mean, he's still now. He was, uh, he was very, very critical of Stu's decision uh, and also angry at the world. And now his, his oldest son now has been diagnosed with this rare disease. And he knew that he would have to bury him as well. But his dad also has an amazing redemption story in the film where he gets to be the dad that he wasn't when Stu was younger. He would have to bathe him, clothe him, feed him. Uh, his dad really came back to take care of 
him. It was a form of Lou Gehrig's disease, right? Yeah, the, yeah it's very similar. Yeah. In which he died. Yeah. I understand there's very powerful confessional s- scenes. Yeah. Would those have been of Stu going to confession or him hearing Stu confessions? Stu going to confession and also Stu now hearing confessions. Uh-huh. Yeah. So he was he was very powerful in the confessional. Yes. In reconciling sinners mm-hmm. uh, to the Lord because he had gone through it himself, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Did you, there's no book on him or were there writings that you uh, delved into? I found, or? no, I, I got most of the information from his family and his friends, um, but we are going to do a documentary as well. And I think Father Bart um, is also going to uh, write a book. Father Bart is? Is Stu's best friend who's also up in uh, Helena, Montana. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Was he ever a parish priest or was he in prison ministry right away? Uh, he was kind of bouncing all around. He did he, he did a lot of work at the parish there, but he was, he's kind of bounced around quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. And I would imagine he would have a tenderness with the sick because oh, of his own. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. What about the, the uh, in the um, whatever they call that that I watched the two minute little blur trailer? Yeah, they so they had some very um, tantalizing prison scenes where he mm-hmm. would be uh, speaking to the prisoners. That appealed to me, Mark, because I love prison ministry. In fact, I'm going up again Wednesday of Holy Week to one of our prisons and. I find prisoners remarkably open to divine grace. Absolutely. And Stu did too, huh? Yeah. Well, Stu was always able to see the good in everybody. And he always felt like nobody was beyond redemption. And to give people hope and let people know that they're cared for and that they're loved, that's inspiring to people. When people feel like everybody's written them off, that's when, you know, what what, what do they have to really, you know, aspire to when, when talking about repentance and change? Um, and growth. So we're really trying to encourage people to find the good in yeah. people. Now, w- w- was he already diagnosed with this neurological uh, disease when he was ordained? When he, no, he was in the seminary. They're in the seminary. Yeah. So even then, the diocese yeah. kind of took a chance. Yes. And he begged them to take a chance. And I get the impression they don't regret it. No, not at all. Not at all. I mean, it's remarkable. Uh, he's uh, he's still very much hard at work today and challenging me constantly to do more and to do better. Um, I've got pictures of him kind of in my office where I usually do most of my work. And every time I glance over, if I'm in a conversation or something, he'll remind me um, how I need to be approaching the situation. Wow. Yeah. He uh, he has a, almost an intercessory. Oh, yeah. I prayed for his intercession you. during the making of the movie. I prayed for Mary's intercession, you know, uh, because of the language and stuff. People, you know, at first it was met with some resistance. Uh, but now people are really embracing the movie because they see how powerful it is and how it's it's touching everybody in a very personal way um, and really giving people a lot of hope. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think, Mark, I'm always kind of pragmatic here. Do you think it could inspire young men to consider the priesthood? I've always prayed to, not only I prayed for intercession, but I think bringing people to church, bringing people to the vocation of priesthood, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, 110%. And he obviously had a high, this is something I always say when guys are saying, when I talk to them about being a priest and they say, well, I'm unworthy, you know, I'm a sinner, and by the way, I wouldn't mind getting married. Mm-hmm. And I say, well, that's a good thing. Yeah. Celibacy isn't being a bachelor. You, you should want to be a, a husband and a father. Yeah. And you're, you're going to be a... a I met an amazing priest in uh, Palm Springs. I think it was uh, Sacred Heart. He's been married. He's married, has four kids. He was a deacon before, and then he uh, petitioned the Holy Father to ordain him. Yeah. And he said, I think there's about 100 or so priests. Out there yes, there are. Yes, yeah. There are some. So I'm hoping that this could really lead to an encouragement of, uh, of priestly vocation. But most of all, I, I just think it's providential that this movie is coming out in Holy Week because this is what we're about. Mm-hmm. Pardon me for using fancy terms, but uh, this is what we mean by the Paschal mystery, the mm-hmm. Easter mystery of the dying and rising of Jesus, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so far everybody says, yeah, that's true. Not just as an historical reality, you bet it was, but he wants to absorb us into that. Mm-hmm. He wants us to die and rise with him, as Stu did, right? Yeah, and you see how Stu, I mean, when when diagnosed, I mean, he, he just felt like all that suffering that he went through brought him closer to God. And ultimately, it's inevitable, right? Mortality. So we're all going to face it, how you deal with those things, if yeah. you're lucky enough to get older. And of course, you know, my faith gives me so much comfort when I'm dealing with loss and failure and all those things. You know, my mom, I just lost my mom during the making of the I film. I didn't know that. My, I just yeah. lost mine three, my three da- weeks ago. Oh, my God bless you. Sorry to hear that. Um, yeah. 
and so you know, and seeing my dad have uh, you know, is your after dad my still da- with us? No, my da- my dad had a stroke, and his he really his physicality deteriorated in very similar ways as Stu. So I saw that firsthand. I was able to experience that. But my mom, she handled it with such grace. She was really just concerned with us. And uh, and so this is giving you people... You see, your mom came from the Irish side, Yeah, right? yeah. It's, <laughs> giving people a lot of, it's giving people a lot of comfort mm-hmm. uh, in knowing that, you know, yes, we're all dealing with a lot, but there's a there's a bigger picture going on. And, and for us to find our roles in, uh, in making life uh, better and, uh, and the world better. And wasn't that the central message of Jesus? Ongoing conversion of heart. Mm-hmm. He ain't ever done with us. I was, the only note I, I took here, where did I have it, that beautiful, um, where, where his, in his ordination homily. Yeah. Did you, that was, did, yeah. you, did, did you deliver our, that in the, yeah. mo- in uh-huh. the movie? All Can I inner, read it? Of course, please. Yeah. Uh, our inner nature is being renewed every day. This is Father Stu's ordination homily, folks. Our first mass, probably. This life, no matter how long it lasts, is a momentary affliction. Preparing us for eternal glory. We shouldn't pray for an easy life, but the strength to endure a difficult one, because the experience of suffering is the fullest Fullest expression expression of God's God's love. love. It's a chance to be closer to Christ. Amen. Who? All right. At at either side of Christ on the cross were two thieves. Mm -hmm. All right. And the one got heaven. Jesus Christ. He said, "This day you'll be with me in heaven." Mm -hmm. That's Father. That's sort of Father Stu as a Saint Dismas figure, isn't he? The good thief. Yeah. Yeah. This is, but th- th- this to me is. Po- would you mind if I plagiarize for my Good Friday homily? Absolutely, <laughs> I would love that. Do I footnote you or honor. Father Stu? Uh, <laughs> footnote Rosalind Ross, the writer. <laughs> Oh, did you go like to Montana and all and see where oh, he we, was? Oh yeah, we visited his uh, his gravesite on Monday. We went and screened the film for his entire family, for uh, everybody at Carroll College, and uh, lots of parishioners and people that were uh, were close to Stu. And it was amazing. That's I mean that for me is the most important thing, right? If if, if we've made them proud, um, because we handle it obviously with the respect and sensitivity that it deserves uh, when making a, tr- a true story. But you know, making movies are difficult, and making good movies are even harder. So I think there's been this movie has been very blessed uh, throughout the entire process. Now, what, did he grow up in Montana? He did, yeah. He grew up oh, in Montana, then went to L.A., then committed to going to the seminary, and then went back to And uh, L.A. at first said no, so he went back home. Yeah. And the bishop there was kind of agreeable to take a chance. Yes. Like Jesus said, cast out to the deep. Yeah. Let's take a chance Yeah, here. he wasn't taking no for an answer. No, and, and he really persevered. Yeah. Did he have a... Did he have an intellectual bent to him, like in the seminary? Did he get into theology and scripture and everything? He did, yeah. He 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 loved to read and loved to study. Um, <clears throat> but you know, again, I, it, it was his real life experience that was invaluable. You know, I mean, he could talk to people that were going through the same type of uh, of suffering that he had faced at one time or another. So he was really able to to, to speak the language, and they understood that you know he uh, he had been through it. Tell me about the end, because that apparently is very potent. When he was dying, Hmm. when he was physically useless Uh at that nursing facility, Uh long lines of people were there to see him every day, correct? Yes. Yeah. I mean, as his, I mean, everything was predicated on his physicality uh, from an early age, and then when he lost that, I mean, he gained the strength of a thousand men there spiritually. You go. Yeah, and it was. Uh, and was he a- was he able to hear confessions like through the end oh, and yeah. everything? Absolutely. Yeah, uh-huh. and there's an amazing confession at the end of the film that the, uh, that the bishop really pointed out and was appreciative that it was there, because there was a young priest uh, or a young uh, seminarian who was always supposed to be a priest. This is what his parents had chosen for him. So like the opposite yeah, of He Stu. went into yeah. the priesthood. Yes, he would try to, to do these prison ministries and, you know, fail miserably because the guys didn't relate to him. And uh, and then he went and had this confession with Stu and talked about how he was angry at God and how Stu had been given every excuse and every reason and out to leave the seminary and to leave a, a life of, of service. And he said no. And how much he admired that, and he was always just looking for a way out, and it wasn't the life that he wanted, it was the life that his dad wanted. And so to be able to see that side of it as well uh, was really interesting. It's a beautiful, beautiful scene, because Stu, um, this guy was always, Stu was always a thorn in his side. And he was always questioning why Stu was there, and he realized that, you know, Stu had belonged there. He was kind of a holier-than-thou guy. Yes. And Stu was, yeah. 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 So yeah. Stu was a his hearing didn't go at the end, huh? No. no. See, I like going to priests who are hard of hearing when I go to confession. <laughs> but he was able to. Yeah, he was able to to hear. Yeah. But he was kind of helpless, though, huh? Yeah. He could his his father, 
portrayed by Mel Gibson in the food in the in the film had to feed him and clothe yeah. him and everything. Oh yeah, huh? yeah. The, literally, how do you get him into the bathtub and how do you get him onto the toilet and all those things? And Stu was a prideful guy, you know. He wanted to always kind of do. He his, was in charge. Yeah. yeah, he always wanted to do his own thing. He always, um, he always wanted to feed himself and wash himself and, you know. But he was always eager to to sit with everybody. Yeah, but Mark. Wahlberg, talk, uh, listen to this. So when was Jesus Christ most powerful? When he was most powerless on mm -hmm. the cross, literally, with his hands and his feet nailed to the cross, literally hardly a drop of blood or a drop of oxygen. That's when he accomplished the salvation of the world. Mm -hmm. And it appears to me that that's what Stu, at the end, was still able to, to bring about redemption and conversion of heart, correct? Absolutely. Yeah. My, oh, my. All right, so the the father is still alive. The mom's gone to the mm -hmm. Lord, correct? Yep. And the father has persevered in the faith? Yes. Oh, uh, absolutely. Stu died in 2016. Is that right or no? Yeah. I forget. I think it was when yeah. I saw the, the stuff you kindly, uh, you, you kindly sent me that he died in yeah. 2016. Okay, so he's been gone only six years. Yeah. Does anybody talk about... Besides you, a cause for canonization? Uh, there was there was a campaign being started. Yes, so um, I mean, this is the kind of guy that would appeal to. Can Pope you put Francis. in a good word for him? <laughs> oh. I'm pushing so many now. I don't seem to have much luck, but this could be a, this could this could be another uh, yeah. another cause. So tell us about the film. Is actually it's kind of been antipasto now. It's been to some select audience. So when does it actually kind of come out? It's coming out in theaters everywhere April 13th. Which is so Wednesday, next Wednesday of Holy Week. Yes. Way to go. Where are, where are you going to be at the screen at the uh, grand opening? Uh, we've had a, a premiere um, in Boston, and then we had a premiere in Helena, Montana. So we're okay. done with the premieres, but we're doing a screening here tonight in New York, and then we have a screening tomorrow in Arizona. And we've been, we've been screening the movie for lots of Catholic colleges and, and various, uh, you know, um, kind of tastemakers and people that can get the word out. Mark, did anybody discourage you in the film? Did anybody say this is a loser? This ain't gonna make any money. What's um, this about? Yeah, I think probably people thought, "What was I thinking?" Um, but you know, I, I prayed about it, and every time I did, I just got the affirmation that I need to be making this movie. This movie is a film that is important. It's gonna touch people, and uh, you know, like I said earlier, I think the film chose me. So it's one of those things where I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm having lots of success. I have this platform. What am I using it for? And so it was good discernment for you. In other words, you, the Lord, kind of kept saying, Shh, psst, Mark, "Oh, absolutely, this is a good thing. yeah." And absolutely. the Blessed Mother, you heard, yeah, yeah. Could you get a little bit more detail about his? The, his he was really convinced that that our Blessed Mother had spoken to him. Oh yeah, and had she said anything, or was yeah. it just a consolation of her presence? Uh, no, we, we, you'll, I don't want to give the give the scene away too much, but you'll hear what uh, what she says to him in the film, and that you know he's not going to die for nothing. Okay. And my son has another another uh, wow. has another path for you. So you know, through Mary to Jesus, and uh, and then of course. You know, um, it's the funny story. When Stu passed, there was a bunch of people in the room, his dad included, and a lot of people said that they saw his spirit come out of him and rise. And the father said, "I didn't see anything. They're all full of crap." You know, <laughs> but uh, but you know, he talked about his visit many times, and there's an amazing uh, moment in the in the um, in the film where Stu goes and crawls to Mother Mary uh, in the church, and he's he knows that she will come and help him. Mark Wahlberg. I think you're going to help make Holy Week and Easter extraordinarily genuine and powerful for a lot of people. And I appreciate the dare you took in getting this uh, movie out about Father Stuart Long. And I am anxious to see it. Well, thank you, I sir. understand. They tell me it is so gripping that people, they stick around. They're crying. Yeah, lots of conversation after as well. Uh -huh. you know. But it's also, it's really amazing in how Stu did so much for so many people in a short time, but he's also challenging everybody who sees the film. People leave the theater really inspired, um, but also challenged to do a little bit more themselves and do a little bit better, yeah. you know, and kind of figure out what their role is, because everybody does have a role in the big picture, Way grand scheme of things, right? Mark Wahlberg, a blessed Holy Week and Easter to you and your Thank family you, and all your great work, okay?